When I'm making a guitar, there are three things that I really focus on. The first is that instrument has to sound amazing. And to make that happen, I use the first principles of physics, first principles of engineering that I learned while working at NASA on how to make structure responsive, how to make a piece of structure resonate as it should. The second thing is an instrument has to feel good to an artist. So when I'm carving the neck of a guitar, for instance, if you think about it, that's the only thing the artist really touches. And the thing about it is, my hand's amazingly sensitive. A 64th of an inch, really, you can feel it with your fingertips. So it's real important to get that right. And then the third thing is to make it aesthetically pleasing to that artist, to that person. So there's an, another element. What is pretty to someone else? You gotta go tease that out of them and figure out what they really want and what they want it to look like. My name is Danny Davis. I live in Huntsville, Alabama, and I work here at the Low Mill in Tangle String Studios. I was a mechanical engineer down at Auburn, and a fellow said, hey, there's some great jobs up in Huntsville, you ought to look at them. I said, what do they do there? And I said, well, it's NASA. They make rockets. Well, the rest is history. Uh, we moved up here in uh, 1983, and I have just absolutely loved this town for all these long years. When I was at NASA, I started out uh, basically in ground support equipment handling hardware. The job was to go get the inside guts of the space telescope, it's called the optical telescope assembly, and move it across the country. And that was just an amazing trip because you've got a billion dollars worth of hardware there that has to be handled so delicately. A lot of engineering in it and just kind of foreshadowing the greatest telescope instrument ever created. The, probably the greatest instrument ever created by humankind. Quickly, fairly quickly, I sort of gravitated toward propulsion because being in a rocket engine <laughs> town, being part of the rocket engine program was just too compelling not to try to get involved in. I've always loved music. Um, you know, I was raised, uh, in my formative musical years were the late 60s, early 70s, so who could go wrong there? Just the greatest music ever. When I was in Huntsville here, um, I wanted a really nice guitar, because I'd seen them, but I couldn't afford them, I didn't have any money. And I said, well, I bet I could make one. So, I, and this was before the internet, so I mail ordered a book on how you make guitars. And I ordered enough wood to build two guitars, which was important, because the first one didn't turn out good, but I'd already started the second one, so I couldn't just quit. So luckily I had the second one in the works, and that kept me going to where um, I could really get interested in building guitars. But uh, all of these makers, they put their heart into it. Now, Taylor guitars, Martin guitars, make a lot, a lot of guitars, and you have to appreciate them for what they are. They're factory making guitars. And then there's a lot of small, independent luthiers, but basically building guitars just because they love making guitars. And that's where you see a whole lot of little tweaks and innovations uh, in both building of the guitar and the aesthetics of the guitar, how it looks and how it plays. So I think people come to me because I do every bit of this guitar is made from a stick of wood. Everything I do is dedicated to what you want in a guitar and not what I want in a guitar, not what's convenient for me to build, not what's in my, you know, on the plans or on the, on the drawing board that day. It's exactly as close as I can get to what the artist is looking for. The process of building a guitar starts with really connecting with the customer. And from my engineering days, we called this building the requirements document. But basically finding out what is it that the customer wants? What is it they really have to have and how do they prioritize the things they have? And then my job is to go in and start piecing together a design that's gonna meet all of those requirements, 
all of the things that they want and even things they don't know they want. The heart of the guitar is this soundboard. So the first thing I'm going to do after I select the tone wood, in this case, this is a, it's a spruce. It's called Adirondack spruce. After I select that, I join the halves together and I start working on the rosette and the sound hole. And then after I've located that and the shape of the guitar, I start putting bracing on the inside of the guitar. Now that's where science meets art because that bracing pattern is gonna determine the frequency that that guitar vibrates at. It's gonna have a preferred frequency. Well, after I build the top and the sides and while I can still reach those braces, I'll go in and measure that frequency it vibrates at. It's called its fundamental frequency. And if it's not where I want it, I can shave the braces to move that frequency to where I want it. And where I want it is to be sensitive to music. music musical notes are nothing but vibrations at certain frequencies, and they're known. They are known. <laughs> If you're playing in tune, you're gonna be playing certain frequencies. So I designed the guitar to respond to those frequencies. The next thing I'll do is start putting the, getting the back together and putting the bindings on. All of these things are important structural features of the guitar, but it's also an opportunity to make it look good. This wood's called acacia. I may use a rosewood. I may use a cocobola, bloodwood, bubinga. I select the woods mostly for the tone they're gonna produce but also for the aesthetic. After that gets done, then uh, start working on the neck. And this neck starts out as a block of wood and I rough cut out this shape and then I just start carving it. Um, the fingerboard's usually made of a piece of ebony. One thing you gotta get right on the guitar is locating these frets right. So I'll spend a minute getting that done. And then the headstock is uh, that's a, another chance to adorn the guitar so that it looks pretty for the customer. And when all the pieces come together, then you find out how, how well you did uh, but, and set the guitar up for that particular artist. The tools I use uh, generally have been around a long time. I, I love chisels uh, because it's, it's, you know, you're one on one with a piece of wood and it's right there. <laughs> Um, that's a rewarding experience to, to do that. Um, a lot of the tools and jigs that I use I've made myself over the years. Um, I find that to be convenient. You can buy a lot of them, but um, you know, I just chose to build my own. It, everything I need to do what I do is in this shop. Now, if I wanted to build you know, 200 guitars a year, I'd go build a factory. And everything would be computer numerical control, but I don't. I want to build it one at a time with my hands because it just feels right to me and I enjoy doing that. I have an amazing team of people that help me in this business. Um, my wife um, is artistic in a lot of ways, but specifically she can look at a situation, size it up, and, and make it better. So she runs our business. She uh, takes care of just about everything in terms of the aesthetics of our, our business here, uh, the books, uh, selling tickets for events, those kind of things. And then we have on our venue side, we have uh, amazing young men that are just great sound engineers. They, they know production, they have great, um, great ears for what, what works and what doesn't work in the music business. So I have a great staff. <laughs> And it's mostly family, and the ones that aren't family, we think they're family, so <laughs> it's like a family business. I've been very fortunate to have some amazing artists play my guitars. For instance, we met with the Black Crows uh, when they were here in town doing a concert, and right after their sound check and before their show, uh, we had an opportunity to take some guitars backstage, and we unpacked seven guitars, and. Rich Robinson and Jackie Green, world-class guitar players, world-class performers. 
they played the guitars and you could just almost see it in Rich Robinson's eyes when he picked up this one little triple lot. He played it and played it, he put it down, he picked it up and played it again. Finally he said, you know, this is just a great guitar. I just really love this guitar. And that's been a couple of years now. And that little guitar has been all over the world. Recently, an artist played here in our studio and he had a Grammy nomination, or his band did, The Steel Drivers. Best bluegrass album of the year. Well, right after they won that Grammy, uh, Gary Nichols contacted me and said, hey, he'd be willing to look at some guitars. And uh, again, we took um, you know, six or seven guitars over to uh, Jimmy Nutt's studio over in uh, Muscle Shoals, Grammy award-winning uh, producer. It was just a pleasure. The place was beautiful and it was, it was like a dream come true. And then this world-class artist picks up the instrument and plays it and you can just see the connection right away. And Gary said, well, I've got to, I've got to have these two guitars. So they're on tour with him now. And, um, you know, that's the rewarding part of it. Uh, you, there's a lot of reasons to build an instrument, but to see it get played like that is, is really a very good one. <laughs> I would just like to say that I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to do what I do. In, in my case, this is artisan work. It's more craftsmanship than anything, but it's really important that that has a place to get done and that people are able to do those things because uh, it's the pretty side of life, you know? I mean, it's, it builds beauty and, and it makes great music in the right hands and stuff like that. And I just really cherish that we have that. I just think it's wonderful.